Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. This lesson is going to be for our chemical engineering cost estimation. We are using Turton et al.'s textbook for process design, and we are looking at Chapter 7, Capital Cost Estimates. We are considering ways that we can estimate costs and right now we're looking at when we have existing data. I've purchased something at one point in time. I want to purchase something else similar to it. In the last lesson, we looked at what we would do if the new item was going to be a different size. Now we're going to look at what if we're purchasing something and it's in a different time. So the value of the dollar has changed. So over time, Costs are going to generally increase due to inflation. Um, and we can measure this in a lot of different ways. But we're going to typically do this using cost indices. The two that are most frequently used are the Chemical Engineering Plant Cost Index, which is the SEPSI, or the Marshall and Swift Process Industry Index. And each of these is going to be based on what's called a basket of goods that would be typical for construction in chemical plants, which is why we use these two. If you're using this or wanting to apply this to a different industry, then you need to find the cost index that's appropriate for that material. Now this chart shows a comparison of some of the cost indices that are most likely to be used for chemical engineering processes. You can see here that this bottom one is the SEPCI, okay, C-E-P-C-I, and it's kind of jaggedy compared to the others, a little bit more so, but if you compare it to this one is the Engineering News Record Construction Index, the Marshall and Swift Process Industry Index, and the Nelson Farrar Refinery Construction Index. And all of these have sort of the same general patterns, okay? And so it doesn't make a lot of difference which one of these you use. You will get a similar trend, but the numbers will be different. So you want to make sure you're always using the same index. No matter what you started with, stay with that one. Now these were all started at different times, so Nelson Farrar started in 1946, and that's when they set a value of 100. Marshall Swift started 1926. The Sepsi started 1957 with a value of 100. And you can see here in this picture that it's up over 500, and in fact it's quite a bit over 500 today. Now, for my course, we use the Sepsi. You can get this from Chemical Engineering Online, but unfortunately it's a paid service. But you can subscribe to the journal and get a slightly out of date value. It's two months delayed. Um, and for the purposes of class, that's more than adequate. But what the Chemical Engineering Online magazine does is they look at these items here. So the equipment they're considering is the fabricated equipment. Uh, this would be things such as, say, a distillation column, something like that. Uh, process machinery, so maybe we're needing some filters or something. Uh, pipes, valves, and fittings. The instruments and control systems. Pumps and compressors. The electrical equipments and materials associated with that. And then all of our structural supports. And they're weighted relative to what is typical for uh, building a standard plant. Then, in addition to the equipment, which is 61% of the total, they also look at installation costs, construction costs, labor, um, engineering and supervision costs, so that they come up with a total way of estimating this for the total amount you would have to pay to build a plant. This is an excerpt from the Chemical Engineering Online magazine. And it's always the like last inside page of their magazine. And they're going to show you various values 
They're going to have recent values a year back. They're going to show you graphs, okay, over time. And notice the years up here so that you can see that, you know, 2012 was really high and then it had come back down, for instance. And then there's all sorts of other subsets that you might look at down here. Okay, we're going to use just the CE index, okay, and you want to find the most recent, which, you know, you find it here. Now, these are some values. Um, October 2017 was 575.1, okay, the numbers change all the time, but you'll see that it's been a little bit stable over the past four years. It went down for a while, and then it's coming back up. I always like to point out that it's actually really, this is a good predictor of what the economy is in our industry and sort of projects a little bit about what your opportunities for finding a job will be. So it's a useful index to look at, not just for doing cost estimates, but also for predicting what the industry is doing in general. Now the way of using these cost indices is actually very simple. It's simple ratios, no exponents, anything like that. So if you have a cost at time one, and you know the index at that time, you can look at the index for today and simply use ratios to come up with the cost for today. So let's look at an example. And so in 1993, a sedimentation tank cost $25,000. And we want to know what it would take if we wanted to exactly replace that tank today. So there's not going to be any change in size. So the first thing we need to do is this is going to be cost at time one. And I need to know the index at time one. So in 1993, the index was 359.2. And if we use, and I'm going to just use 2016 just for simplicity. So, so in 2016, the value of the SEPC was 541.7. Now, actually, as I'm creating this video, it's actually quite a bit higher than that, but this is just to see how to work this. And so, therefore, all I'm going to do is to figure out what the cost is in 2016. I would take the $25,000 and multiply by the new rate index over the old index. And if you multiply these out, what we're going to see is that we're going to again get some crazy number, 37701.8374164 Okay, this just keeps on giving. And so when we're doing this, because it's a cost estimate, again, my rule of thumb is I on preliminary numbers before I get to the final project total, I'm going to always keep one extra digit. And so $37,700 is a good estimate for the sedimentation tank today. So in our next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a project where I have data, but the size and the time have both changed. Thank you very much for your time.